Good morning, friends. It's a privilege to be here this morning in the service of the Lord and to feel this wonderful welcome and fellowship. It just means something to a traveler's heart to feel that welcoming spirit. You know, it just it comes to you and there's just something that don't take its place. And to be back at the tabernacle again and to, uh, in the service of our blessed Lord. And now, um, we had some dedication service for the babies, but I think maybe we'll just get that in a few moments. Um, we are nearing Easter. I think it comes on about the 21st. And um, I was wanting to get here just a little early to see the elders and Brother Neville. And uh, about... I, maybe it would be a good thing if we had a little meeting here just before the the Easter service. Maybe start, say, on a Wednesday and run through Sunday and end up with the baptismal service on Easter Sunday and um, have a little a meeting, a get-together. This is a little tabernacle that I was cradled in. It's my first and only church. And I would just like to come back for these holy days and and worship the Lord with you all. All would be in favor of that. Thank you. This be the Lord's will. Yeah. Well, the Lord willing, we will begin Wednesday before Easter on Sunday. And I would like to say that we would uh, maybe ask the treasurer or the trustee and them if they would put a little ad in the paper here somewhere and tell the children that we are here to Worship, and we'd love to have a little fellowship with them all. A little kind of like coming home and make ready for. Maybe the Lord will give us a resurrection of a, of a, a greater portion of His Spirit on for His coming Easter. It's, a, it's the like the fall and the spring. I think spring is such a beautiful time when everything begins to take on new form and new life and. Reminds us of the resurrection. Easter comes such an appropriate time in the springtime. We notice God's word always runs just exactly right with his nature and, and so forth. So we're, if the Lord willing now, we will start this. And, and if they put a little ad, I said in the paper, and don't make it glamour. Just tell the folks that we want to worship the Lord together. And we would just... Love, as many as would like to come along and fellowship with us a little while, we'd be glad to have them come along. Amen. All churches, and you get on the phone and tell your neighbors about it and tell them that we're just going to talk about the Lord and, and just all worship Him together. I'd kind of make a move if it would be pleasing with the people and good in the sight of God and all right with the trio. I'd like for the Neville trio to help us out during that time, wouldn't you all? That's right. And so we'll see that they're taken care of in this manner if the Lord so sees fit for us to do it. And so uh, we invite other singers from different churches to come in and, and uh, help us as we go along. The singers from your church, we'd be glad to have them see Brother Neville or maybe the night before and be able to get them on the program to Amen. have them to sing for us. We love good singing. I would just like to have a good old-fashioned homecoming time. Amen. Where, just, where we just get together and get Angie, or is Sister Angie here this morning? Get her out so her and Sister Gertie can sing homecoming time for us one. Hey. Keep holding on and that seems something like Beginning of a revival again, Sister Gertie. A lot of water went down the river since we used to sing that year. I had a birthday yesterday, and I, I know I'm no boy no more. <laughs> I said, I'm past 24 now. So <laughs> and then, that's just my years. I don't count the ones I was literally, naturally born and physical. I'm just counting my spiritual years, you see. <laughs> About 24 years ago, I was born again. And that, that's eternal, and it's one great, blessed birthday, and I, uh, it'll never run out. Amen. It's one thing, sure. 
<coughs> I want Sister Gertie, if she will, before we bring the little ones up, or a baby's dedication. Now, many times in the Bible, we find out the only place that I know of in the Scripture for the order of babies. Now, a lot of people sprinkle them, you know, and call it baptism and so forth, which, uh, that's just okay. But, uh, I always just try to like to stay just the way the Bible says it, you know. In the Bible, they never baptized little children, neither did they sprinkle them. They just brought them to our Lord, and he uh, took them in his arms and blessed them and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And uh, the strange thing was now, and I just turned right down in the Bible, just exactly where I sat, Mark 10. Just, here it is right before me. And so the Lord uh, brought the little children, they brought the little children to him and he just blessed them and said, suffer the little ones to come to me and don't forbid them for such is the kingdom. Now we know that our Lord has gone to glory and his spirit returned back in the church to carry on the message until he comes again. We're looking for that. And the way we do it here is just bring the little ones up and we bring the elders of the church up and we take the little ones and dedicate them to the Lord. Now, I think it's such a sweet little service to see old little bitty fellows because it's no matter how young we are, how old we are, one of those little ones has just got a place in our heart. Isn't Amen. that right? Now, Amen. when we come to God, that's just the way we are in God's heart. We never leave that stage. We're always little children. When Abraham was 90 and 9, he was still just a little baby to God. Amen. God told him, said, I am the breast that you nurse from, Abraham. He just, just lean against me and nurse and everything will be all right. And he changed Abraham back to a young man again, just by holding on to his word. Amen. Now, I believe we sang a little song, we'll bring them in, and you bring your little ones up here now, you who want to dedicate them. Now, I ask the elders that they'll come forward to you. All right. Sure, we all love Brother Sister Riddle. We know Brother Riddle here. He runs a brewery down here in the city. And they've got the cutest little baby here, little Sharon. Sharon uh, Louise. Sharon Louise Riddle. How old is she, Brother Sister Riddle? Four months. My, my. That's a little eye of the heart, isn't it? And now, the Lord has given to you this lovely little one. And now you are dedicating it to him, putting it into his arms, that God who has given you are returning back to him. Amen. Giving it to him, that he might bless his little life and make it a life of service and make it a pray that God will make it a child that will bless your heart when you're old and to Jesus tarries and be a great <coughs> worker for God. Amen. You'll be proud of this little girl. May God grant it. I be take her into the I want all the ladies and of course the man too to look at this fine little lady. Isn't that sweet? Little Sharon. Let us bow our heads now. Our blessed and heavenly Father, in the precious word we read that they brought to you little children that you might put your hands on them and bless them. And now this comes this morning Jesus a uh, holy wedlock that you have given into their trust this lovely child little chair and maid and we pray dear heavenly father that you will bless this child as they are coming this morning to give dedication to bring the baby back to the one who gave it and I ask thee God to bless them bless their lives and may this little child live grow and have perfect health and be your servant and may it be a woman 
that'll be after the heart of God and the heart of the parents and grandchildren. And now as your elders, we raise the child to zeal as they have placed it into my hands. And I'll raise it to thee in Christ's name. May you bless this baby and may it live and grow and be strong and healthy and a servant of God. We ask this as we present it to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Bless you, little honey. You're a mighty sweet little baby. God bless you all. And you have lots of joy. The earth, the moon, the stars all swung into place just as God breathed on His Word. And oh God, today we ask that you breathe on your Word as we are trying to bring it to the people. May it take its position this morning its place and be rooted and grounded in every heart that every person here might receive your blessing. Help those, Lord, who are out of the way, crippled and lame in their spirit. They don't know you as a loving Savior as we have been privileged to. We pray that you will bless them abundantly today. And may they, when they leave this building, be happy and rejoicing over the newfound Christ that they have become acquainted with during this meeting. If there's some that's sliding away to the cares of the world, oh, God, bring them back. And the sick and the needy, Father, we pray for them that you will heal every sick person here today. Encourage those who are weary and bless those who are holding faithfully. Grant it, Lord. May your Spirit be upon all. Bless the Word as it goes forth, the speaker that shall speak it and the hearer that shall hear it. And all together get glory for this gathering this morning. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now I haven't got just exactly rested up from the long meeting, which has been now some four months. And this last five weeks meeting has been very tearing down. For we've had a wonderful meeting all the way across the nation now, from New York to San Francisco, the whole nation zigzagging back and forth as we have crossed. The Lord has saved many, many hundreds of people. Last Sunday, a week ago, alone, our blessed Heavenly Father, I seen between a thousand and fifteen hundred sinners repenting at one time at the altar at Oakland, California, in a big arena. We were just packed out and we had had to seek the middle of the place down in the middle instead of the the arena sides, and the Lord just blessed. And we had in there the great earthquake, as you have heard, and that was my wife's first one to be into. She was just a little shaky afterwards. It was very strong as the building shook and the dust 
flew in the bottles on the we standing in a drug store getting some postcards to mail home and the uh, bottles shook and the chimney fell off and the big buildings rocked together and the road split open and part of it sunk underneath and it just goes to remind us that the handwriting's on the wall. Amen. There will be earthquakes in diverse places. And that one day, eight earthquakes struck that same city. And then about 10 o'clock that night, we had just got in or 10.30 and gone to bed. And uh, the lamp sitting in the middle floor like a rock over from another great heavy earthquake just goes to show that 8,000 miles beneath us is nothing but burning red lava. And we're just at the time, and it's here, the, our aggressors across the sea saying that they are forbidding the people to go into Scandinavia and so forth, that they annihilate them with atomic weapons. And we wonder what would happen if they would start dropping those bombs and <clears throat> bursting those places into the earth when it would just exactly do what God said it would do. Amen. No more water but fire this time. So it brings joy to the heart of the waiter that's waiting on the coming of the Lord in the blessed hour that when these old vile bodies shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, we shall see him no more struggle, no more sorrow, no more old age, Amen. no more infinite days. No more hunger, no more weary, no more sickness, no more death. Oh, we just can't hey, fathom. I'm telling you, friend, it's hard because we're human and death is such a thing that we all hate to face it. But it's, it's a blessed relief. It's a blessed thing to know that he'll come someday and these things will be changed. Amen. Now remember and I, uh, get on to your, especially your sinner friends now. Or to come to the meeting, this revival coming out. Now, just in the way of a little speaking, uh, my throat, as it says, hasn't been cleared yet exactly, and I'm still a little tired, but um, I rested this week, kept away from even the phone and everything, so I could get a few days of rest. And then this coming week, I want to rest up a little if I can. And then get ready for the little revival. Then I go to Canada. And from Canada back to Indianapolis. From Indianapolis then to Chicago. And from Chicago, that's the Christian Businessman International Convention. And they got me booked. Now, you pray for me. And we're especially doing this revival. That God will direct me a complete worldwide tour to be start in June and come back in November. Or July, rather. And that's to go into Europe. Asia, all down through the islands and seas, and come back to for the west coast. Leave the east, go come around the world, come back to the west coast. Such a needy time. <clears throat> and I, there's something kind of checks me a little. I don't know whether it's something in the road or what. I don't know, but you pray for me, and God will surely work it out right. Amen. Now, I got two places in the scripture that I have chosen this morning to read. Because of this, that the people are coming are to be prayed for. This is just a, a little time to pray for the sick and the needy. Now, I'd just like to teach a little on the Word. Then, maybe the Lord willing tonight might uh, not only teach, but preach a little from the Word. Now, I want to read from two places, and that's over in the Old Testament, both of them. One in Numbers 13th chapter and the, um, the 30th verse, and the others in Joshua, the first chapter, and the ninth verse. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And then over in Joshua, the ninth verse of the first chapter, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. And may the Lord add his blessings to his word. I just love the word. And if I would say for a subject this morning, I want to take 
to find the context in here, a text called God Keeps His Word. Now, if we could just dwell on that for weeks, hold a year's revival and still be just as fresh at the end as it was at the beginning of that subject of God keeps His Word. There's one thing that God cannot do. Did you ever think of it? There is one thing that God cannot do. That's fail. He can do everything but fail, but He cannot fail. So if our most holy confidence is built this morning up on that wonderful one who can do anything there is to be done except fail, how much confidence should we have in His eternal Word? Amen. My heart has been stirred in the last year after I have looked across the nations and seen the things heap up the way they are and the little isms are rising. It well brings to my memory what's wrote there in that cornerstone on that morning when we dedicated or laid the cornerstone when the Lord woke me up not knowing what visions was in those days. I'm looking at the chimney on top of the house five feet or more from where I was sitting when the vision taken place 23 years ago in 1933. be about 24 years ago, I suppose. Uh, I'm looking at the chimney right now. It was long before I was ever married. I was single in home. We were just building this church. And we laying the cornerstone that morning when the Lord gave me the vision. I woke up and looked out the window. And it was along in June and the honeysuckles or the buds are blooming. And there it looked like I went walking out or something and I... I saw the Lord Jesus and saw my tabernacle and he pronounced to me that this was not my tabernacle and got me out of the skies. Many of you know the vision because it's wrote and published and I believe the fourth or fifth edition of nearly 100,000 books has went in 17 different languages. And just watch how that has come to pass word by word. Just did never fail. How that we come together in a lovely little group of people and how the Lord did bless us and then from place to place but finally into the evangelistic fields and over the world now. How it's gone. And how the time has come that uh, there would be these things that's happened. How that the world would heat up teachers with itching ears and the truth would be rejected and would be turned to fables. And then that how that he said, preach the word. Stay on the word. And if anything I've tried to do is stay on God's eternal word. Amen. We're living in the closing hours of this world's dispensation. I don't see how that anyone could look, just take a look at the newspapers or turn on the radio and not repent. I, I can't see it. How that we're just at the, the eve of some great something that's fixing to happen. Right. Even nature shows it. Amen. The world is becoming nervous. It's bursting forth its volcanics and it's, it's having a nervous prostration. The great earthquakes are shaking and splitting the roads and fearful sights of the flying saucers and missiles that they can hurl through the earth and destroy a nation in five minutes. We're at the end time. Something's taking... There's no way to stop it. There's not a way. There's only one way out of it. And that's up. There's no way of trying to hide. There's no hiding place but one. As little girls used to sing here when I was just a boy preacher, they used to sing, there's no hiding place down here. 
I went to the rocks to hide my face, but the rocks cried out, There's no hiding place down here. But there is a hiding place. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Amen. How glad we are to have this hiding place at the end time. And as we look around and see these great signs of moving and this coming revival, I, if God willing, I want to go all the way into Genesis and bring out those great striking points that we're at the end. We're here. I believe that this existing generation is on the earth right now that will see the coming of the Lord Jesus. I'm 48. I may not see it. I don't know. It may come tomorrow. But I believe that there's some here that will see the coming of the just one, the ending of the time. And I believe that most all of us, especially us in this church this morning, will never die with old age until we see one of the most horribleness things happen that's ever happened to people that's going to happen right here in this nation. It's this truth. Brother, we've waited past the borders of mercy until there is nothing left but judgment. But the righteous will not have to be punished with the unrighteous. God will come and Jesus will redeem his church and we'll go up in the air to meet him. And it'll be far beyond any bombs or any troubles. And we'll be protected during that time. So children, back to your God quickly. Don't tangle with the world for anything. Stay out of this modern world. Stay out of these modern theologies. Just look to the Lamb of God. Read your Bible and pray all the time. Don't be weary, be rejoicing, happy, for the redemption of the church is drawing nigh, when we shall see him who died for us. Our text is a setting to kind of coincide with the age today. To begin with the first scripture I was reading in Numbers, it was speaking of a people that had been called out from a great mighty nation that was near and had received their judgment. I want you to understand that sin will not go unpunished regardless if it's in a nation or a church or a home or an individual. Sin must be dealt with on the basis of judgment. No other way. It cannot be atoned. Say, I've done wrong, now do good. That won't work. You cannot make reconciliations yourself because reconciliations has already been made. It's a confession that you're wrong. And then come and straighten up. So sin must be dealt with. And God always deals with sin by judgment. That's why our Lord died the death that he did on Calvary is because that sin was such a horrible thing that judgment of sin was placed on him that those who desire might go free through believing on him and accepting him as their sin barrier. Not how good we could be, but how we believe and accept him. And when we accept him, he comes into our heart and that's where the good part is. It's not on what we could do. It's on what He has done and what He has done for us. There's where He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was up on Him and with His stripes we were healed. Now these people had been down in Egypt some 400 years and we're all acquainted with with the great going down of the children of Israel and how that 
down there, God had turned them over to the Egyptians, and they had mistreated them because of God's word said that they would do that. Now, God promised Abraham four hundred years that his people would sojourn in a strange land. And when the time of the promise drew nigh, God has everything ready to meet. Oh, I just love that. When I think of that, just at the crucial time, he's not one minute late. Amen. He's always just on time. Amen. If we can just be like that, oh, we try to push the thing. We try to make it our time. But we can never do that. God makes it on His time. Amen. We can't make it any different. Yesterday, standing in the backyard of, of my sister, lives next door to his sister Woods, we was noticing a little cocoon that had formed on a tree, and the wind was blowing it back and forth. And she was telling me that in the streams of the deserts, I believe it, she was reading an article about the cocoon. It's a little worm that goes in there and forms a little uh, shell around him to keep him through the cold. And, but when it comes time, this person who was dealing with the little fellow, they seen the little uh, cocoon moving and wiggling around, and they felt so sorry for the little fellow, so they thought they would just cut the end of it off and let the little bug out. Because when he come out of there, he was going to have wings. He went in as a bug or a little worm. He comes out with wings in a more like a glorified state. Amen. And as he was wiggling and pulling and tugging and beating and biting and trying to get out of the cocoon, they felt sorry for him, so they thought they would just give him a short cut. So they go get the scissors and cut the end off. And when they cut the end off, the little bug come out, but he never was right because he didn't have any strength in his body. He had no, he couldn't use his wings. And I think that's the way we've tried to duplicate to get out to the altar and say this, that, and the other and try to get the people back to God or into the church or to come to Christ. Yeah. Just let them boo-hoo it out. That's all. Just work your way out of it. That's all. Amen. If you try to give them a shortcut, they're never able to stand. I just like to see them struggle and work at it till God gives them a real birth in the natural Amen. way. Amen. Just give them the real birth. Just People say, well, honey, I think you prayed enough. You just stay there until you're ready to fly. That's the only thing. Amen. God has a way of doing it. Oh, well, if you want to be good, just go over to join the church. Mama went to the same church. That might be just fine. But, you know, it takes a death to bring a life. Amen. And we've got to die. Until then, we are so dead that there can be a new life come in. Then our wings will be valuable and our, our uh, experience that we have will be valuable to others Amen. and to ourselves. God. Israel wasn't ready, but God was ready. And he had a little baby born by the name of Moses. And he was right there at the age of 40 to take the children out. But Israel wasn't ready, and by the reason they wasn't ready, then they had to labor 20 years longer, or 40 years longer it was. 40 years longer they had to, to toil down in Egypt when they would have been able to have come out 40 years before that if they had only been ready. God was ready because the time of the promise drew nigh God sent an angel down to the earth to make ready the people to fulfill His Word. Amen. For God always keeps His Word. Amen. He said to Moses, I have seen the afflictions of my people. Now I have heard their groans and their cries because of the taskmasters. And I have remembered. Amen. I have remembered my word, my promise. 
400 years had passed, but God still remembered His Word. Almost 2,000 years has passed, but God still remembers His Word. I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am there ye may be also. I believe the time of the promise is drawing nigh. Notice, as they were speaking and getting ready, and 400 years had passed, and God was on time with His Word. Then we find out that after 40 years longer, and I might stop here just to say these words. Now, you can quote me because I know what's going on tape back there. I believe that we are, the coming of the Lord Jesus is way past due. Amen. I believe it was due a long time ago. Amen. But it's because of the church is not ready to meet Him. Now, if you notice, He said, as it was in the days of Noah, in the days of Noah before the flood, how it would be, and God was not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. Then He suffered long. The flood stage was way past due. Down in Egypt, it was way past due. Do you get it? In the Andalusian destruction now, way past due. The destruction and judgment. And coming out of Egypt, way past due. Forty years over time. But God was determined. God was determined that His Word would not return to Him. He was going to keep His Word. He has to keep His Word. Amen. He must do it in order to be God. If He has to make a, a change of everything, and by grace He'll do it. Amen. That's the reason I say if the church does not get herself ready, Amen. that's your duty to get ready. The bride has made her self ready. Amen. The garments is paid for. Amen. They are ready. Amen. But you must be ready to wear those garments. Amen. The church has made herself ready. Great. Now, brethren, listen. If the church doesn't get ready, God's able of these stones to rise, children, unto Abraham. If this whole of this people don't straighten themselves up and get yeah. back into the harness again, get back to the gospel, God will raise up out of, he can bring Catholics up, Presbyterians, or whatever he wishes to, he'll do it. Yeah. A few weeks ago at I man, some of you are sitting here now that was present amongst the Presbyterian, Baptists, and Methodists. They streamed to the altar. They received and responded to the gospel much better, much better than many times the holiness people does. We've just got it on our minds that we are called by His holy name and let it go like that. It means more than to be called by His name. It means to live for Him who died for you. It's a life, a consecrated life to God. Oh, how we need back to the Bible. Here a few nights ago, I was saying to the Luthers, who are at the meeting up there now, they just said, give us five more colleges like this of those Luthers that 71 of them received the Holy Ghost that day at the college when it was there. Said, give us five more schools like that and Lord Terry, ten years? We'll have the entire Lutheran church filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey. Oh, my. Sure, God is able of these stones. He's going to have a church presented without spot or wrinkle or a blemish. His grace is all sufficient. And He can do it exceeding abundantly. And I said here not long ago, 
the Luthers did have the torch light to the world, what happened? If you was the light of the world, you Lutheran people at one time, at the first Reformation, what happened to your light? What did it go out? This is the reason it went out. It's because you left God's Word. Wow. You believe that the just should live by faith, which is absolutely the truth. But there's more than that. Wow. The just shall live by faith. Then along come the Methodists. They, you Methodist people, you picked up the torchlight of sanctification and you did hold the torchlight for a great revival. That's all true. Wow. But what happened? What happened to the Methodist church? is because you let the light go out. Amen. That's what happened. Uh, and you preach sanctification, the second definite work of grace, which is positively the truth for the Bible. But you just let it go at that. Amen. Uh, and then along come the Pentecostals with the restoration of the gifts. And you spoke with tongues, and then you made a doctrine out of that. Uh, and then what happened? Your life's gone out. What's the matter is because you fail to stay with the Word, God's Word, we're unfolding. And we must unfold as God's Word unfolds, as time unfolds, time unfolds. And if the natural world, this man is the same man he was 6,000 years ago when God made him. He's the same intellectual, he's the same intelligence, He's just the same man with the same five senses that he was thousands of years ago. But look what progress he's made in the past 50 years. Look what that fallen son of God has did. He's invented automobiles and radio and electric lights and atomic bombs and jet planes. Look how fast the pages are turning fast in science. But we are trying to linger back on some old church creed and stand there when God wants us to unfold the word. We're living in the last days. We're living in the time that God's great, beautiful church ought to be standing on its feet, shining like the living of that thing. But we are back some well I belong to the Presbyterian, the Methodist, the Pentecostal. I'm this or that. Oh, what a disgrace! We should be unfolding God's Spirit pouring out. Not just one little gusher, not one little baptism, but baptism after baptism. Amen. Not a revelation just to live by faith or sanctification or the gifts of the Spirit, but revelation after revelation, Amen. power after Amen. power, glory after glory. For we ought to be way up the road ready for the transformation. Amen. And we're lingering back down in the old things and saying, well, we keep going back. Let's go forward. Those Hebrews said, now here, we're fed pretty well, though we work hard. And now we've got the things that we have. we got the garlic pots and so forth. So let us be satisfied. But Moses had a revelation. He had been in the presence of God. He had something else. He went back and showed them that the very God that existed many hundreds of years before that was the very same God. And he'd done signs and wonders before that to prove that he was the very same God. Oh, blessed be his name. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The dispensations change, the times change. The people change, but God remains. He has to be the same all the time. His word is eternal truth. He cannot bear it come, come right or to the left. He must remain the same. Then we find what takes place. Here comes Moses down with the signs. I have been in the presence of God. I have seen God, and God has did great things. He performed a divine healing act. He performed another act as a miracle. And he showed them that the very God of heaven had appeared to him. After hundreds of years of the supernatural being gone, he showed that God was still living. 
And God had sent him and said, Go tell them that I am have sent you. Not I was or I will be. I am a present tense. He is not I was. How people can claim God and say the days of miracles are past and divine healing and all the blessings are come and still say He is the living God and the I am. If He's I am, He's just as real as He was at the burning bush. That great name that He appeared there, no scholar yet has ever been able to interpret it. J-V-H-U. No one, they call it Jehovah, but it wasn't. No one can interpret it. Why? It's the eternal one. Amen. Amen. He dwells in light. He dwells in eternity. He dwells in immortality. Very lasting I am. Hallelujah. My faith is stayed on that solid rock. There's nothing can ever harm when you're anchored to that place. The storms may shake and bend it. But my anchor holds within the veil when a man or a woman has anchored in it. Nothing can never shake you from it. Hallelujah. Just as their time was for deliverance, and they failed to see it, so is the time for the deliverance of marching orders for the church. It's at hand. Look, my friend. They had what? Curse the word. Second a prophet. Third an angel to lead them, to guide them. Every one agreed with the other, the three of them. The word agreed with the prophet, and the prophet agreed with the word. The angel agreed with all three of them. Amen. All of them. The word, the prophet, an angel. They were ready for the march. Oh, blessed be the name of the Amen. Lord God. The word, the prophet, and the angel, all three of them together, one great testimony. God always said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And a true prophet will always agree with the word, and any angel will testify of truth. Amen. We're ready for marching orders. Sure. And he brought the people <coughs> out on the road up. They started rebelling against the prophet and against the angel and against the God and against the word. And they got into trouble. The Bible said there was a mixed multitude that went with them. A mixed multitude came out. What was it? The supernatural had been done. There had been miracles and wonders. Any person, a human being, longs to see behind the curtain from where he comes and from whence he will go someday. He longs to see behind the curtain. But many times when the supernatural acts has been performed, then there's a mixed multitude that goes. That's what happened in the days of Luther. When the mixed, God's been trying to bring them out since that day. And in the days of Luther, the just shall live by faith. They tested it and tried it and found it so. A mixed multitude went. And as soon as Luther went, what happened? They organized the church and made a great big ecclesiastical system. And when they did, the church went back on the shelf. Along come John Wesley, one of the great mighty warriors of the Middle Age. And he stepped right out and defied the Anglican church. And defied the Catholic Church. And defied the world. That the holy God said people must live holy. And he stayed on his promise. Of God's promise. And he brought a miracle. What happened? The mixed multitude started with him. And when Wesley went, then the mixed multitude come in. And what had they done? Corrupted the church. So many of them won't even have blood songs in their clan books. Uh, Certainly. Whatever they had come along the Pentecostal. And the Pentecostal began to find the gifts. As soon as they got to the gifts, first thing, the littlest gift in the whole group is speaking with tongues. That's the last and smallest. God started with the amateur things. And they couldn't even hold that. Look here, the first gift in the line of gifts is wisdom. The second is knowledge. And if you don't have any wisdom, how do you know what to do with knowledge? Seek the best things first. Wisdom. 
And if you get got wisdom, what can you do with knowledge or speaking with tongues or these other things? It takes wisdom. It takes God's wisdom. Solomon said, call it your mother. Right. But what did they do? The Pentecostal received the speaking in tongues and they made a denomination out of it. And they went and said, this is it. Sure they did. And a mixed multitude went with them. And today what's happened with the Pentecostals? There's two factions of them. One of them's just as cold and formal and stiff and starchy as they can be. And the other's after a big bunch of isms. Running oil and blood from their hands and everything else across the country. And calling evidences of the Holy Ghost. And frogs and lizards and things jumping out of people and putting into alcohol and so forth. Anyone knows that a devil doesn't have a carpal body? Oh, and if the blood of Jesus Christ dripped down on a man, it was a carpal body. And Christ has already come and it's wrong, man. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus comes that every knee shall bow and every tongue yeah. shall confess. Amen. He who is coming will be like the light that cometh from the east even into the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. We know that that's true. Then when we see those things happening, when we see those things coming to pass, then we know that there's a mixed multitude that's went up with the Amen. people. After a while, one faction become way over on one side. One become way over on the other side. And there's your mixed multitude. There's your reaction again. There you're coming. And when they did like that, they come to the place of Kadesh Barnea. And when they come to Kadesh Barnea, that was the judgment seat where trials must be settled. Oh, if you could only understand it in the church. Now, here's where we want to squeeze just for a moment. Now, listen closely. Kadesh Barnea was the testing time. And every child that comes to God has got to be tested. Amen. There's no exceptions at all. Amen. God tests and tries every child that comes to Him. Praise God. Is that right? Amen. The Bible said they are. And as we notice now, when those trials come and testing, there's testing times comes for nations. Amen. Now I say this, I'm not a politician. God runs his own nation. He doesn't run these nations. The devil runs these. Every one of them, the Bible said they does. The devil operates every nation. Notice, when the testing time comes for the nations, when the testing time comes for Israel, she failed. And when she did, God turned her over to Babylon. Amen. As a nation, she failed. And when the testing time come for Rome, she failed. Amen. When the testing time come for Greece, it failed. Amen. When the testing time come for France, it failed. Amen. When the testing time come for Russia, she failed. Amen. Listen, and I say this with the reverent heart to God. The testing time has come for America. And she's failed. The gospel has been preached from east to west, from north to south. They've combed every little place and crack and corner. Great revivals has went forth, Billy Grimm's and Jack Shooters and old Roberts. And they have, oh, just hundreds of them, have combed every little crack and corner. The devil throw out a television, you know, and then God worked it around to throw man on the television and every drunkard in the bar room or wherever he is will stand without an excuse. Amen. Yes, sir. The testing time has come. What did I tell you from this pulpit? Last year, America made her fatal mistake. I said fatal mistake. She sure did. And look what she's doing now. You see it in the government affairs. They're trying to go right over and hook up with the Arabs. Amen. Don't you know God's word said, whoever who curses Israel will be cursed. Amen. Certainly, I stand with Israel. Amen. Take our ground, Lord. Take it. Certainly, they're doing the wrong thing. Sure they are. Brother, look at every nation that turned against the Jew. They suck. Look at, look at Germany when she turned against the Jew. And they burnt the bodies in the center areas. And look what it is today. 
Look at Italy that turned against the Jews when Mussolini asked them from Italy. Look at her today. If we wasn't beaten, they'd be starved to death. And here the gospel come and give a mercy call throughout the nation for years. And we've turned it down. And now working the devil taking his seat is turning the hearts of these political men against Israel. And they're hooking up over yonder with the Arabs. Brother, we're as good as gone. Amen. We'll sink as sure as the world. I love my nation. I love it's what it stands for. But, brother, I love my Lord above everything. And I love to see my nation to its knees, but I'm afraid we'll never do it. We're at the end time. What happened? A mixed multitude got in. Watch our churches. A few years ago when they had the old-fashioned holiness churches, when they stood for God and righteous, when women dressed and act like ladies, when man dressed and act like man, when people went to church on Sunday morning, when they had all night's prayer meetings, when they had the old-fashioned type, they had a real revival. God bless! He cut off every enemy before them. They were journeying on. But when the wedge of Aiken got in the camp, with nothing left but destruction, Amen. we're on our word, God, on our road, God keeps his word. Amen. The testing time come. The testing time come for the Lutheran church. The testing time come for the Methodist church. The testing time come for the Pentecostal church. It comes for every church. It comes for every person. A testing time. And there's only one way that you can ever know that you're right. Stay with God's eternal blueprint. Stay with the word. What God says, say that's right. Don't take nothing less or nothing more. Why should we have to have substitutes for this, that, and the other when God's word is full of promises? Yes, sir. We don't have to take any substitutes. This is the truth. Amen. God keeps his word no matter how unreasonable no, no. it may seem. God keeps his word anyhow. Amen. He certainly did. What would your grandfather ever said if your great-grandfather would have told him that there'd come a time when the carriages would go through the streets without horses? He laughed at him, maybe. But they're here. Right? Amen. What about these other things that would take place when all these great prophecies have been made? But we're here. And someday Jesus will come. That glorious majesty of the Son of God. He promised he'd do it. Amen. He promised he'd judge sin. Brother, you either accept God's provided sacrifice for sin, or you'll stand alone in judgment. Nation, church, or individual. The testing time. Watch, they sent someone out, 12 of them, to find out what they'd say. Ten of them come back and say, Oh, we can't do it. It's impossible. We just can't do it. But little old Caleb and Joshua climbed on a stump. They said, we can do it. We're able to do it. Wow. It depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking on the outside, does it look this way? Don't look what them people say or what anything else says. If it's contrary to God's word, stay with the word. God promised them that land. That's what Caleb and them was putting their hopes on. Read the book of Deuteronomy. See how Moses cracked and said, I did this and I did that. And God did this and said this. But you would not. God stays with his promise. Oh, sometimes it seems like it's hard. Now I want you to listen to this. It's the hardest of battle. Way down in Egypt, God said, I have given you that land and all that's in it. Now he never just said, I'm going to pick you up, take you up there and set you down. They had to fight for every inch of ground they had. God, when he commanded Joshua there, he said, Be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Amen. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou be. The Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. No matter what it is, how hard it is, how great the obstacle is, that doesn't matter. If it's down through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord thy God is with thee. 
wheresoever thou goest. Oh, how Joshua could call Israel together and said, Stand here and watch the glory of God. Amen. God is with his word. God made the promise. God said to Joshua, Every place that the soldier put set, that's yours. Hallelujah. Amen. If it's for salvation, if it's for divine healing, if it's for more blessings, if it's for peace, Amen. if it's for anything that God promised, faith footprint. Amen. Amen. Every place, all of your footsteps, that have I given you for a possession. God promises. God keeps his word. God's word is everlasting truth. I believe it. You believe it. Brothers, it's time for us to make footprints. We can't stay right here in the same camp. The fires are moving on. Let's move on. From glory to glory. From Bible experience to Bible experience. Amen. Let's unfold and open up our hearts. Raise up our hands to God. Keep singing. Stay in the Bible. Don't get outside of that. Stay right there. Follow. We've got the prophet of God. We've got the word of God. And we've got the angel of God. He's the leading this church just exactly like he led in them days. Amen. It's exactly right. The word of God is before us. The prophet of God is the Holy Spirit. God is leading the church. We're moving in the pillar of fire in the glory of God, staying together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we are sons and daughters of God. And the great revelation of the word, the Holy Spirit, sinking into the hearts and bringing forth the trees of salvation, Amen. righteous living, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, patience. Hey, sure it is. That only won't happen to a grand tabernacle or to another tabernacle. It happens to individuals. If a whole grand tabernacle gets together in that one accord, the whole thing will be moving in one big unit for God. But if there's only one in that grand tabernacle moving like that, God will move with that one. There's only one way to do it. That's falling in with it. March on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God keeps his word. Why well, those fellows said we can't do that. We can't have a revival over there. Everything's against us. Oh my the Amorites are there and all the Herites and all oh, they're all walled up. We look like grasshoppers. But little old Joshua about forty years old, beat himself in the chest and table said Caleb hey, was standing there saying, Caleb said, You know what? We are more than able to do it. Yeah. Oh brother. Little bitty hook those deuce and they're bounced up down and say, We're more than able. We're not only able, but we're more than able. Wow! God said so. Brother, we can have healing, we can have miracles, we can have revival, we can have the blessing. Why? God said so. We can have a true Pentecost. We can have a real revival. God said so. God keeps his promise. Just as God keeps his promise with his blessings, God keeps his promise with his judgments. Amen. We've got to take judgment of the blessing. We've got to walk forward or walk backward. We've got to go with him or go alone. No one can go there with us. Stay on his word. Uh, I can think of a very good friend of mine that's gone on to glory. Oh, blessed old brother, a sainted man, filled with the Holy Ghost, the name of Paul Rayner. One time right down on the West Coast, when just before he died, you know his testimony, his song that he has written, Only Believe has called me to the pulpit. I wonder if Paul in glory hears that old song being sung by the thousands and thousands and by the different languages. How did he know that that poor little old boy sat before him there with ragged shoes on and not even a necktie or even a haircut? That God would let me take that song around the world. Amen. God keeps his word. Oh, the Lord has planted it on water day and night. He said, that song should pluck it from my hand. Praise God. It may seem like it's sinking, but it'll never sink. Oh, that little old ship that night, when all hopes is gone, it's just tossed it out. Looks like the last hour was there, but all at once someone come walking on the water and just as calm. He's always there. He's never late. One more dash and the ship would have went out. But he's always there. 
serve him. That day down there in Babylon, the Hebrew children were walking in that far turning. It looked like that the very end had come. But as they stepped in, there was one like the Son of God stood by them. He's always there. He's never late. He keeps his word. I'll be with you, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil. Hey, He's always there. He keeps his promise. He's eternal true. He cannot fail. His words can never fail. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words can never pass away. Paul said one time he was having a, a struggle. He was out in the islands and he had a fever. He was uh, nearly 100 miles from a doctor out in the swamp, in the swamp, backwater fever, tucking, and that's sudden death. And it got dark, and he told his little faithful wife, said, you stand right by me, honey, and pray. It's getting so dark in the room. But I said, I believe in God. I don't care what happens. I believe God. Come, stay right with it. I said, you stay here and pray, honey. And she prayed, and it got darker. He said, dear, it's getting darker in the room. But oh, I feel at peace. And after a while, it got so dark, he went out. He went into a dream. He thought he was dreaming. He was back up in Oregon, where he come from, cutting some timber. And the boss said, Paul, go up to the top of the mountain there and cut me a tree so many inches through, so many feet long, and bring it down to me. He said, all right, boss, I'll do it. Went up there and down his little old tree and stuck the axe in it. Reached down to get a hold of it, and he just couldn't lift it. He just, he said, I've lost my strength. I just can't go any further. I have lost my strength. Why, well, he said, here, I'm a big man. I weigh better than 200 pounds. i got a great muscle back. Why, well, he said, I used to just stick my knees together, get a hold of most any size log and could raise it up from the put chains under. He said, and here, that I little limb, no bigger than that, and I couldn't lift it, but I tussled it. I tried to all my strength was gone. Oh, he said, there, I thought, what can I do? He said, I sat down and leaned up against the tree. He said, oh, I'm so sad. Uh, my boss wants this little tree down there, and I'm not even man enough to take it down. Oh, what our boss wants. He wants a church without spot, without wrinkle. He wants a blood-washed bunch of people. He wants the people of faith who stand on his word and say, that God, eternal truth, it was meant for me and I believe it. And he said, as he sat there, he was leaned against the tree and he was weeping and said, he heard his boss speak and said, Paul? And he said, yes, boss, here I am, but I've lost all my strength. I just can't go any farther. I've tried to do and I've tried to obey you and do what you said do, but I just can't get this thing off the ground. He said, I've struggled, I've tried, I've done everything. And I just wonder if that is the attitude of a many good, true-hearted preacher today that's long to see a church built without spot or eagle, to see the promises of God made manifest. We tussled and tried and screamed and cried and preached till we was hoarse and laid on our pillars and wept. Oh, God, why is it just when we get straightened up that in comes the devil and busts us up and tears us up and just knocks down everything we got? What can we do when we see our lovely people and how they'll be scattered and gone about like that? And said when he heard his voice of his boss, he thought, that sounds strange. I never heard my voice speak, that boss speak so gentle to me. And said when I turned around, it was my real boss. It was my master, my savior. He said, Paul, you're just struggling yourself to death. That won't do you any good. He said, Paul, don't you see that little stream of water running there? He said, yeah. He said, just pitch the thing in there. Get on it and ride it on down to the camp. It goes to the camp. He said, I jumped up and rolled the log in and jumped on the log. Went out over the river just a screaming to the top of my voice, screaming, I'm riding on it. I'm a riding on it. I'm a riding on it. And when he comes to himself, he is right out in the middle of the floor, and his wife screaming the top of her voice. He is out in the middle of the floor saying, I'm riding on it. I'm riding on it. I'm a riding on it. And brother, sister, I know the trials are hard. I'm getting old, and I've preached. I've done everything that I know to do. I've got to a place where I feel I can't do no more. I've just laid the whole thing in the lap of the Lord Jesus, and I'm riding on it. 
I'm riding on God's hammer. Hallelujah. I'm waiting to die. Water is dead. I'm just tugging from my hand. God's church will endure forever. The word of God will stand in emphatically right forever. And regardless of kingdoms come, or atomic bombs fall, or America backslide, whatever takes place, this is his word. He keeps it. And I'm riding on it. I believe it with all my heart. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus. Oh, what a ride. Down over the ripples of joy. Down through hallelujah current. Oh, we're just riding on it. You promise. Your promises is all true. And we know that every one of them bears record that they're true. And through the ages we've seen the blessed old Bible unfold to us. And now the great hour is approaching. The midnight hour. Lord, great holy ministers of the gospel has went across the nation preaching, crying, drinking branch water, persecuted, run from pillar to post, run out of cities, locked up, made fun of, scorned, life starved. But the church has moved on. For your word said, Upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. And we're riding on it today. The rock, God's eternal revealed truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon that solid rock, the church stands today. The atheists, the communistic, the elements of this earth has rose and they beat and they starve. But she's built up on that solid rock. The devil has sent in false finders that's made fun, is persecuted, is called everything in the world, and we've been docked about and tested and tried and oh everything. But oh God, as Caleb and Joshua have oh, we still say we're standing Amen. eternally on the word of God. He keeps his promise. He said he'd do it and we believe it. And may each individual here this morning get a close view of that now. What it means that now now we're riding on this. Someday we'll be down at the camp where the saints are camped on the breath of the earth. God and his children will be rejoicing forever. Damn it, Lord. And while we have our heads bowed, our eyes closed in this tabernacle this morning, I wonder if in Christ's name, if someone would have the courage to say, Brother Branham, this day right now in this church, I now raise up my hands to Christ and say, from this day henceforth, I'll ride on your word, Lord. I'll stand there except Christ is my Savior. Never try to do things to try to merit my own salvation. I'll just believe on the Lord Jesus and accept Him. Let Him put that deep divine love in my heart and the peace that passes all understanding. I'll wait on the Holy Ghost to give me. I raised up one time and thought I could go do it. But I found out that I couldn't. Sure, you never will. But if you just stay there long enough till he does it, then it'll stay there. Then it's anchored. But if you just try to do it, you're going to fail. You've got to fail. That's the reason you have your ups and downs and ins and outs and all the things you're doing. It's because you try to do it. You say, oh, I believe I'm all right now. That ain't it. That isn't, that isn't it. No, it's the Holy Spirit that comes in. He takes the place. He takes all the old roots of bitterness out, the old anger and temper and jealousy and love of the world and things. It takes it all out of you, and then you're a new creature. Would you raise your hand and say, Christ, make me that kind of Christian this morning? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, lady. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Make me that kind of a Christian this morning. I want to be like Jesus. I want all the roots of bitterness taken out of my heart. Now, there's been a number of you. Raise your hand. Now, right where you are. If you will with all your heart, now, not, not just imagine, but believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, is standing right by you and will take that old bitterness away from you, that will make you what you long to be, He'll do it right where you're... He'll perform the operation in your hospital. If you'll just let Him do it. For all things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only 
he prayed, Lord, remember, child, it's your soul. You may not be in another service. Oh, this may be the last one. Let God do it right now. Say, Brother Bram, should I come up the altar if you want to? Sure. If you don't want to, stay right where you are. You just believe it. He that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting life, and shall never come into judgment, but pass from death to life. That's it. If you'd like to come to the altar and pray, it's open. If you want to stay where you're at and pray, it's your soul. It's you're the one. The time is at hand, brother. The church is just about made up. The old stream's muddy. We've sang and fished and thrown these old lead sinkers out there until the whole thing's become muddy. Too many hogs in the water. She's muddy. Ask me as a minister, I just feel this, that if God's going to do it, it's going to have to take God. I can't. So it's up to you. There's the word. There's the truth. You see it unfolding right here before you. The end is at hand. Jesus may come at any time. It may be that there may not even be any United States time the sun goes down tonight. They could send 5,000 atomic bombs at one time. There wouldn't even be one living creature on the earth in another hour from now. You want that's up to you. Think of it now while we pray. Blessed the Heavenly Father, at the closing of this word, as I turn the pages back, the message is sealed up now. The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. Several in the building this morning raised up their hands and said, By that, I want to become a Christian. I want to be a real, real born-again servant of God. And Lord, maybe many years you've dealt with their hearts. You, you told them that. Your grace has still reached out to them. They're not altogether gone yet. Some has done gone to a place they have no more desire. A year ago, they used to put up their hands and say, Well, I'd like to be a Christian. Now it's done too far. They don't feel it no more now. Just about all over. And that seems to be the general run of the nation. Hearing great evangelists as they cross the nations. They've sent out feelers. They've done everything. They've organized groups. They visit homes to those who had raised their hands and tried. Or thousands and thousands made start. Two or three would hold on. Well, it's over, Lord. It's over, God. We are gone. Oh, Father, I know that you said that all that had come to Christ you'd keep. And I believe that with all my heart. And I believe, Lord, that you will keep those whose hearts and minds are stayed on you. And I thank you, Lord, for the church and for the saints of the living God that's in that church, this great spiritual body. But, oh, God, how my heart quivers for those outside of that, knowing that they see the handwriting on the wall, seeing the great things are happening, the signposts, and America's still full of old dirty jokes and uncensored programs on television, radio, and love story, and scoffers, and laughers, and big-time frolics, and Hollywood evangelism, and, oh, God, it's, it's the midnight hour striking, truly. She's ready to go. And what can I do, Lord? I've worried, I've cried, I've begged. I, I, it's just on you now, Lord. I, I, that's all I can do. I've preached it. I'll just stand right on the word, Lord. I'm trying to ride right into the camp now. Time won't be long. Now, God, to those who have the honest heart today, God, do something for them just now. Let them become your children from this day on. Amen. Heal the sick in the midst of us, Lord. Make them well. Bring back those cold backsliders, Lord. Let them know they're just they're playing on such treacherous ground. Soon they'll be gone. It'll be too late then. Grant now that your spirit will deal greatly with us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. To the young people, I would say this. 
If I could this morning after a birthday yesterday of 48 years in this life, 20 some odd years of that, about 24 years I've spent for the Lord Jesus. As a boy of about 23 years old, I, I started preaching the gospel. If there is any regrets that I have, any regrets, if I could touch a button this morning and go back to the, the fabulous age of about 16 or 17, I would only want to do it for one thing. That is to serve Christ. That's what it means. To serve Christ alone. God who knows my heart knows that's true. Serve Christ alone. Amen. I have never seen anything or thought anything that ever compared with this blessed anchor of Christ in my heart. Amen. I don't know nothing. I have sailed the seas. I flew through the air. I've seen all the sights the world has. I've seen the seven mysteries of the world. I've seen the seven outstanding sights, rather, of the world. I have seen all the mountain sides of the world. I've, I'm a hunter. I've hunted in all kinds of nations. I've done everything. Fish. I've rode horses. I've ranched. I've done everything that I'm known to do. And I'll say this, that there is all of it put together. Won't make one little dot to the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What could I do? What could I Oh, yes, is these little kiddies here. I've had my little girlfriends and slicked my hair down and put my windshield back on my car and went out with my date. I thought, but it just didn't satisfy. There's something you're lacking all the time. I've seen the girl with the pretty brown eyes and it would, uh, you know, how you'd feel as young folks. I thought that was just it. If I could only have the date with this young lady, it would just, it would, it would just take all my anxiety. That would just settle it. I'd have a date with her and be out with her 15 minutes and looking for someone else. It just doesn't satisfy. Oh, there's nothing. But that blessed hour, blessed be his name. Down in a low coal shed in the back of a building, kneeling on an old grass sack. In an alley. Am I? Where I knelt down there in the wet ground and said, Lord Jesus, can you do something for me? That's when a peace that passes all understanding 24 years ago anchored here in this heart of mine. And it's worth all there is in the whole world. I've never seen nothing to compare with it. Do the many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Amen. It's grace that's brought me safe thus far. It's grace that'll take me on. I've trusted Him in the hours of sickness and accident. I've trusted Him when the airplanes were spinning in the storm. And you didn't know I said, Lord Jesus, are you finished with me? If not, straighten this plane out to your school around to your high condition. I've stood in the clinics for the best of doctors in the nation, to, and they look at me and say, just a few more minutes to live, he's going, and one of the best doctors that can be got for me, and I said, Lord Jesus, are you through with me? And all of a sudden, I was normally back to myself, currently, oh, amazing grace, how sweet that sound, how I wish I had tongues to explain what it is. It's too great for the human mind. Take my word. Don't you take a substitute, friend. Don't take a substitute. Don't just go and say, well, I, I do this. I, I tell you what, I'm a pretty good person. Don't rely on that. Don't do it. Just stay there until something just reaches down, takes away all the sin, and puts a kiss there that just burns. And when the trials come, you don't have to wonder if I'm going to do that. It's just something hold there. And as a middle-aged man now, I've got to come down and think this, that one of these days, i got to go. If Jesus tarries, i got to go. I don't know what it will be when I get down to the end of the road. I don't know. I'm not trusting upon my preaching. No, sir. No, I'm not trusting upon the things that I've done. Oh, God, no. Oh, let that be far from me. I've done things since I've been a preacher, neglected and done this and that. I don't want to trust in nothing, not enough, sir. I don't want to say, Lord, I've won over a million souls. See, that has nothing to do with it. Not a thing. The only thing I'm trusting is His grace, His promise. His word, Lord, you said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
Yeah. Out of fear no evil. You said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. When I'm pressing that pillow in the cold death, sweat's running off of my brow, you'll be there. Just as sure as I'm standing here, you'll be there. When I preach my last sermon, close the night and walk away the last time the work's over, you'll be there. Yes, sir. Just as sure as I believe it, he's coming. When he comes again, I'll be there too. Yes, sir. Not because I merit it. It's because he has for me. And I accept it up on the basis of his eternal word. And I know by that there was something happened. Something happened. Not how much noise I can make, how well I can say, if I was the greatest preacher in the world, if I'd raise the dead, whatever, that has nothing to do with it. It's because something happened. Amen. Something taken place in here. It's taken all the old jealousy and bitterness and evil and everything from my heart, and now I just love him day and night. Amen. Something happened. I want to see him someday. I want you to also. Little church, struggling now for the kingdom of God. Don't never falter in this day. If you do, quickly repent. Jump right back. If you uh, stop your toe, don't fall. If you fall, get up. Get up, my, get up, sure. If you made a mistake now in this revival coming on, you went back and got cold and different. Wait, get out of your Bible. Walk out in the apple orchard somewhere. Get out to yourself and say, God, now here I am. I'm sorry of this thing. You're going to get a whipping for it. Just remember that. Yes, indeed, you'll reap what you sow out. Yes, sir. But whatever you do, take your whipping here. Get right up and straighten up and say, Father, here I am. Whip me. Just as thou see fit, Lord, here I am. That's right. And walk right back with a hallelujah on your heart. God lets the whip down on you. Just say, yes, Lord, I deserve every bit of it. Just keep on going. God will take you through all right. It'll be over one of these days. I think that good old song, Brother Neville and them used to say, I'll soon be done of the troubles and trials. Yes, that's right. How many loves him? Let's see your hands. Give us a car amazing grace. Everybody is speaking to him. Slowly now. Amazing grace. many of them and I have heard many of the old saints when this coming down as they pass up in the ministry was getting right I've heard them talk about how they felt just begin to realize that now <laughs> just begin to realize oh how <laughs> what a wonderful thing 
What would I hold to today? Where would I go? Where are you going? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. What would I do? Where, what would happen to me today if it wasn't for Christ? Where would my hopes be anchored? I'd be a maniac. When I see what's fixing to happen and know that was all of it forever, oh my, what would I do? But oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad it's just the dawning of day. We're just in a dream. We're fixing to wake up. Amen. Oh, what a nightmare as it was to come out of it into a spring down of everlasting youth, everlasting health, everlasting joy, everlasting peace. Isn't it wonderful? He is so real. I wonder how many here are sick now and wants to be prayed for. I see your hand. All right. I want to tell you what's happened this last week. We've had some of the most marvelous things to happen in the meeting. Of course, at the platform. And I have coming into a, a type of something that it just seems to be greater than what it was. I have come to the platform and God has given a gift, of, uh, a prophetic gift, which... And I, that's beyond question. I can prove it to you right here. See, that's beyond question. But I see it just doesn't get the job done the way it should because it's just a gift. Another thing, it's an individual. You see, it pertains to an individual through a gift. But I've done something the other day, tried to get the people in Oakland, just to, or the, in the big arena there. I said, just this presence, and just stayed right with that word and got the people with the, you know what? There was more healing than I believe I ever seen in any one meeting taking place outside of the big meetings like in Africa and around like that, but for its size. The people just recognizing the presence of God in the meeting. Just sitting there and getting the presence of God. And uh, people would get up, healed, cross eyes, straightened. And, oh, it's, I believe it's coming to a time where the, Paul said, where there is prophecies, it shall fail. Where there's tongues, they shall cease. I believe it's coming to a time that when the saints will get together like this and just a love spirit will just sweep over the audience and just every person in there, oh, yeah. all that's wrong will be taken out. Right. It'll be there's such a presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe while we're to lay hands on them and pray for them now, it's a contact maybe of a minister anointed and laying hands on just as a blessing to God. But I believe it's coming a time when God's church is going to be so called out like that where the saints will set together and the Holy Spirit will just come in and just move, just like it was on the day of Pentecost, see? And just heal the people and raise up the people and great things, I begin to see it happen. Because I tell you for why. Man has went forth with gifts, that's true. I have no doubt to say I'm not a critic of anybody's what they believe, that's up to them, see. But I've seen men with gifted ministries, but they went forth and more or less made us, um, what would I say, now with respect and with love, and God knows it's from my heart, see. That they have made more like a, a money-gathering affair out of it, you see. Just get people together and want to put on some great big something, and maybe they put the money out, and, uh, well, that may be all right, but... It seems to me, they say, well, if the ends are coming, what's the people need but their money? Oh, what do you need but it yourself? Well, see? So that the thing of it is, is, is get the gospel to the people, you see. Is the preach. I believe if we just, in gifts, you see, signs. And now a person could come here this morning and stand here in this pulpit and work great miracles and signs. That wouldn't even mean the person is saved. Devils work signs and wonders. Sure they do. And the Bible said to do more than that the last day. Well, Jesus said, many will come to me and say, Lord, have not I cast out devils in your name? And have not I did this? And have not I done that? And all these things. He said, I didn't know it. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. See? I believe the time is coming. The manifestation of the gifts is give to every man to profit with all. That's, that's true. I believe gifts are wonderful and we need them and uh, respect them. But I believe the time's coming when it's going to be on a higher standard now. 
Well, after all these things is done away, that which is love will endure forever. See, it's the love of God. We'll just, we'll just be standing preaching like this or talking. And just the love will just settle over the building. Hey, my. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, this is the day of preaching. This is the day when we got to move in and get sinners and pull them out. See what I mean? Hey, That's what the preaching of the Word's for is to the sinners and to bring them out. Now we have to watch in there and we signs and wonders are done by the laying on of hands and so forth because it's preaching. But I believe the time's coming now when she's just about, the church is about anchored away. Amen. See? God won't have a freak body. You won't have six fingers on one hand. It'll just be five fingers on one hand. The body of Christ won't be free. And when the last person has come into the body of Christ, then it's over. It's over. I don't know which one. This might have been the last one this morning. You might have been the last one. Maybe over in Africa today, the last one will be brought in. But when the last one's done, I mean, the go- you may go ahead and preach the gospel, but there'll be no response. See? There's no response. Talking with Billy Graham and them, where they went into a place where 30,000 or 20 or 30,000 was converted, they couldn't find 20 or 30 people within a year. Think of it. Just think of that. See? Now, that makes me a Calvinist exactly. See? What God has made, God has made. Now, Jesus never come to earth just to say, I'll have preachers go out and preach some, tell them about what I've done, and maybe somebody feels sorry for me and gets saved. God don't run his office like that. There, God at the beginning knew exactly who would be saved. Jesus come to save those that God knew would be saved. He wasn't willing that they'd be lost. But be God, He knew who would be lost and who would be saved. Therefore, He could predestinate. Not predestinate, he, he, for, before knowledge, He could set in order to make everything work to His glory. Because that's, the, devil, the devil is an omnipresent or omnipotent. Neither does He know the end from the beginning. God alone knows it. So that's one thing God's just up here. He knows, the devil don't know what's going to happen. Amen. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Only thing He knows is He's just the devil. And He just does what He can do. And everything Amen. He can get into, He does it. But Amen. God knows the end. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So God knowing the end, He can make everything work right to His glory. Amen. 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 Oh, I love Him. Mine. He, God. He's God. So remember, when the last person that had their... When was your name put on the Lamb's Book of Life? Yesterday? Last year? Year before last? No, sir. When the world was created, your name was put on the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. What the Bible said. The Bible said in Revelations, And the Antichrist deceived all that dwelt upon the face of the earth, whose names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. Amen. Your name was written then. Now the only thing, you say, what's preaching the gospel then? Well, the Bible plainly explains it. See, he said, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that took a net and went to the sea, or a lake. And he cast the net into the sea and he pulls out. That's preaching the gospel. See? There's a whole sea. The United States is a lake. And the ministers... Now, I go down here stand at Jeffersonville on this corner of the lake. Say, Brother Delphi, have you been singing? Yes. Doing any good? Not too much. Well, let's, I'll sing with you a little while. And I'll throw my net out. And he throws his. And here we pull, preaching. Pull in. A bunch of people come up and say, Yeah, I want to accept the Lord Jesus. All right, look around. Which is fish? Which one? I don't know. See? Well, I, what are you going to do now? Well, I'm going over to California. Lord, send me over to California. I'm going to sing over there. Well, I'm going to throw the net out like this and push in. 1,500 comes at one time. With all them saved, I don't know. There they are. I take the net up. That's the gospel net. Some of them, the Bible said, with all kinds of things that was in the water. They all breathed on the same water, lived in the same water. Is that right? Mm-hmm. See, Amen. there was terrapins, mud turtles, snakes, frogs, lizards, scavengers, and real fish. Amen. Now, those that were fish when the gospel net went over them was fish when they were on the bank. Those that were terrapins in the gospel net were terrapins on the bank. It won't be long till they'll take right back for the mud again. As a hog to its wallet and a dog to its vomit, away they go. See? But at the beginning, they were terrapins to begin with. It's not my business to say they're terrapins. I don't know. I'm just saying them. See? Just pulling the net. But when the last fish has come out of the water, brother, that's it. Am I? 
Oh, the Lord Himself will come and will say the work is done. The station will be changed after a while. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yes, sir. He'll say the work's done. It's finished. It's all over. One of the last ones come out. And there's been an old bunch of hog wallers around and everything. God's pulling them fish out of there as fast as He can. Preachers from every side just swinging nets from one way to the other. We're even wrapping nets around one another. Hey, We're just pulling as far as we can, singing. She's just about ready. He'll blow the old pond up one of these days. And she'll all be over, but the fish will go to the good, clear waters out there where they'll have eternal life forever. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. when that last one comes. My, how, what a privilege it is for God to say, Would you like to be a fish? <laughs> Amen. Would you like to be a fish on my table? Would you like to come and be meat at my table? Oh, my. Hallelujah. Sure, sure, Lord. See? But their nature is fish. See? When you're a Christian, your nature is a Christian. You don't have to say, now, you, 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 can't, you can't smoke, you can't drink, you can't do it. You don't have to say that. They just don't do it anyhow. See? Their nature is different. The Spirit of Christ is in the person. And Christ don't do those things. See? You say, you have to love the Lord. You ought to go to church. You don't have to tell that people that. They go anyhow. They'll walk through rain. They'll go to, they'll go to their death or go to church. Sure. They love it. They just got to get there. That's all there is to it. It's their life. If they don't, they, they feel like they're perishing. Sure. Yes, sir. You just got to get there. And whenever just something is burning in your heart, not to go there to argue now, not to go there to fuss, but to go there to worship. Yeah. Wow. And to go home refreshed. Isn't that a wonderful life? How many has experienced that? Let's see your hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Let us sing that. Peace, peace. right next to you. Shake hands with him. Say, God bless you, brother, sister. Want to meet you in heaven. Amen. Could line up right up here now for the prayer, right over on this side. 
And I want the ministers, if they'll come forth now, to help us pray for the sick. Line up on the right-hand side. Come around this way. <laughs> That's right, over on the right side. Those to be prayed for. or with expectations rather that you're going to be healed this morning? Is that what's in your heart real down deep? If you're coming like that, my friend, I'll just assure you that your healing is just as sure as your salvation. Amen. Just as sure. Now your healing is not as permanent as your salvation. Your healing will fail you. You can be, if you're healed, you'll be sick again. You could be healed today with pneumonia, perfectly normal and well, pronounced well by the doctor, and next week die with pneumonia. Amen. That's right. Yeah. You could be totally pure of TB this week, and two months from now die with tuberculosis. They can pass a test with not one germ in your body as they can find. Jeez. And then die in two more weeks with two birth. That's right. <laughs> and you've got to die anyhow. But the benefits, David cried, forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Amen. Benefits. What is the benefit in the journey? Who forgives all of mine iniquity? Iniquity is something that you're going out and you do it and you know you oughtn't to have done it. He forgives it. You ask him, he forgives you. Forgives all of my iniquity. Who heals all my diseases. Amen. Now I want to settle this for you forever. Then somebody says, Brother Branham, do you believe in divine healing? Now let me say this sensibly and sanely. I want some person, some doctor, some science, somewhere, I invite them in this revival to come to this pulpit and show me one place where anybody was ever healed outside of divine healing. Amen. Amen. I, I want you to go to your doctor or to anybody that you wish to, and show me any person that was ever healed outside divine healing. Amen. I want you to bring me the medicine that will heal. I want you to bring me the doctor that says he's a healer. You'll be a healer, all right. <laughs> heal. The heal of a doctor. Amen. But God is the only one who can heal or ever did heal or ever will heal. Amen. If we had some medicine that would heal, we could build a man right here on this platform with the medicine. Amen. That's right. We could build a man, create him right here on the platform. Yeah. Amen. Just think of it. All healing is divine healing. Amen. God has methods of doing it. Now you say, well, Brother Branham, I had an operation, a tumor or appendicitis that the doctor had to cut it out and I died. That might 
That's probably the truth. But did you know the doctor never healed you? The doctor moved obstruction. Wow. He just kept defending God. That's the thing that was hurting you. But he never healed it. You broke your arm. You say, well, I broke. I bet if you break your arm, you go to the doctor. I sure would. But he couldn't heal it. What if I didn't say, Doc, heal my arm right quick. I've got to work on the car this afternoon. Yeah. Why, well, you, you know, I need mental healing. He'd say, I can set your arm. But who does the healing? You say, Brother Brandon, what about penicillin? When they give it to you for, for um, disease germs in your body, like venereal and, and whatever you got, pneumonia. Does penicillin, no penicillin heal you? No, sir. Penicillin, penicillin is an antibiotic. And an antibiotic is a killer. Am I? Antibiotic kills. All other medicines kill. Me- medicine does not build, it kills. Man. Medicine is a killer, not a healer. Show me a medicine that heals. Show me a medicine that isn't a killer and you ain't got no medicine. Medicine kills. Kills germs. Just like if you had rats in your house and you put out rat poison. And the rats is eating holes through your house. Well, the rat poison kills the rats, but it doesn't patch your house. See? Penicillin... Penicillin kills a germ, but God has to heal the place where the germists eat. Amen. See what I mean? Anyway, God's word, we're going to get into that. God's word cannot cross itself up. Amen. It's absolutely the truth. If I just want the person to come put your finger on the word any time during the revival to show me a contradiction in God's word where it crosses itself up. It can't be straightened out with the Word of God. Amen. It isn't there. Sure. It isn't there. There's no contradictions in the Word at all. Amen. Absolutely. You get a subject. I can write you one letter and tell you something, write you another letter and another letter. First thing you know, these two, but I'm talking on two different subjects. See? Certainly. But God is the only one that ever did heal, that ever will heal, or ever could heal. Amen. You break your arm... Now I say, well, I got a tumor. What about that? All right? Now, if that little place where that tumor's hooked on, if God, by casting out the evil, and the life goes out of that tumor, it'll die. If the doctor cuts it off, then God has to heal up the place where the doctor cut it. If you don't, you bleed to death. Is that right? What if he takes appendix out of you? And God doesn't heal you. Then what about it? You'll die right there. You clog up one of the main veins in this street out here. You get out here and clog up one of the main veins and find out on, on this street out here, this sewer, and watch what happens. You go out here and clog up a main, cut off the main water valve down here, one of the water valves. Watch what it would. It'll blow her out down here at the pumping system. There's not a place, not a thing, a system in the world like the human body. But you could cut an artery in two and clamp it off here, and God will make a way to bypass that button, take it into that artery again. Amen. If it didn't, if in one minute's time, if that back back could hit your heart, you'd, you'd be dead like that the first time you scratch yourself. Who's a healer? Oh, my. God's a healer. See, you can't have no mechanical systems work like that. It's got to be supernatural. Amen. I had the artery shot in two in both my legs. See? And God there, me, a little old sinner boy, dying on that field. God don't even want me to preach the gospel. He bypassed the blood. I don't even know about it unless somebody tells me or have to look down and see the scar. See? God in the arteries. You break the main band on this, this pump out here on this pumping system. Watch out here at the government what takes place. <laughs> It'll back right up there and blow it out. Sure, well, that water is forcing down like that. It'll push right back. But God makes a bypass and goes around. Amen. Who does that? What intelligence does that? Show me a water system will do it. Hallelujah. 
Amen. It's the intelligence of God. It's the great creator. Amen. He does it. Amen. Yes, indeed. What makes a tree different from the other? What makes a bird color from another different? What makes his speech different? What makes us what we are is an intelligence. It's God. Don't be afraid now. He met, this is his promise. It ain't your brother Brandon. It's his promise. I'm the Lord who heals all your diseases. Then he's sick. Call the elders of the church. Norman, I pray over. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. These signs shall follow them. Believe if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And then when that order has been done, accept it just the same as you would to repent and be baptized here. Walk right away. That's the finished word. It's all over. See? But we are watching for some great outstanding miracle. It does happen when it's faith enough there to make it happen. But if there's not faith enough to make it happen, it'll happen anyhow by and by. Amen. Look what Jesus said in the translation there when he said about the mountain. He said, by and by it shall come to pass if you ask this mountain to move. And to believe in your heart that it looks, and by and by it will come to pass. It will. Now you're sick. Many of you are dying in bad shape. I see him holding a man here now. man very sick. Cancer is a horrible thing. But God can heal cancer. Mama, I can show you in here. How many of you have ever, has anybody here now been healed with cancer? Raise your hands. Look here, soul of the church. We've had a brought cause God's a healer. Now, every one of you out there in appreciation, I want you to bow your heads. I want you to pray for the name will come here. And I ask you people, I want the elders to get here so we can pray for the people. And when you come by here, do this now. When you come by here, believe with all your heart. Right. And just take my word, not my word, but God's word for it. Just believe with all your heart. This says it. That's it. It's all over. God said so. His word said so. He can't fail. I don't care how I feel. I'm going right with me how saying it's the truth. Right. Watch what happens. But see if we say, man, say, come by the prayer line like this. It just never happened. That's all. 